everybody. Welcome to the webinar. How's it going? Give people a couple seconds to uh, join. Hopefully we won't have any Zoom issues like we did last week. But everything looks good today. I see a bunch of people pouring into the room. So as you guys are, are coming into the room, as always, we love it to, to see where everybody's coming from. It's always inspiring to see that there's e-commerce entrepreneurs re all over the world. Um, I always like make it a personal thing to like see how many countries we can get in a webinar. So let's see. Go ahead and put in the chat. We got Austria in the house. We got Canada, Lebanon. All right. Denmark. Well, what's going on? Tons of people from Canada all of a sudden. All right. New Zealand. New Zealand. What in the world? What time is it over there in New Zealand? Goodness gracious. That's some dedication. Isn't it like the middle of the night? Very nice. Uh, we got Poland. North Carolina, Rincón, Puerto Rico, Philippines in the house, China, uh, 8 p.m. in Brussels. Excellent. Turkey. Okay. I, I, I don't know if anybody's counting. I mean, Gio, you should count in the background. This is <laughs> Curtis says he's in North Korea. Come on, Curtis. You're not in North Korea. Uh, Kim Jong-un is, is watching BBL. We got UK in the house. Bangladesh, love it. Germany, Guatemala. All right, well, cool. Like, I think we have over 20 countries as per usual and some new ones that I haven't seen before. But, you know, we really enjoy you know, inspiring e-commerce entrepreneurs everywhere. And you guys inspire us by, by showing us the, the love and taking time out of your days and nights. And some of you, even in the middle of the night, uh, are on here. So it's really awesome. You know, we, we love bringing the community together. Uh, to this webinar. And what we do here is we're, it's kind of like two, threefold. You know, we're not just, you know, here to talk about Helium 10 um, and, and try and sell you Helium 10. As a matter of fact, there, if you're not a Helium 10 member, there is, I don't think there's even a slide. There's no opportunity to become a Helium 10 member. We're here to give you guys information and some training and let you know what is new. I, I think a lot of you are already Helium 10 members. And sometimes you might not know all of the new features that we Offer So one of the first things that we do in our BBLs is let you know about new features, new tools that are available to, to, you know, help you grow your business. Cause that's what we're here for, right? That's why you're using Helium 10. That's why you're selling on Amazon. You want to grow your business and you're already paying for Helium 10. So might as well, you make sure you're getting the most out of it. So our, our, what we originally wanted to do when we launched this program was to make sure that we have a, a space where we can show you what's new and how, more importantly, how it can help you grow your e-commerce businesses. Um, but now we're also added new features, you know, to Bigger Better Launch. And, and every month we choose different tools where maybe it's not a new feature, but it's been around for a while. But uh, we notice a lot of people aren't taking advantage of it, guys. You know, we don't make tools just, you know, to pipe up our development team. The reason why we make every single tool and every single feature here at Helium 10 is to help you guys out there who are Amazon and Walmart sellers grow your business. And so if you're not using something, we want to make sure that you know about it uh, and hopefully you're able to start using it and uh, improving your business. So that's what we are doing this uh, month as well. Not just showing you our new features, but showing you some existing features that we think can help you. And so we're going to go ahead and get into that. Another thing you guys listen to on a regular basis is our Serious uh, Sellers podcast, all right? And today, we're going to be talking about some strategies with Market Tracker and Listing Analyzer, but it's only going to be about four or five of them. We, we had about 15 of these strategies on a recent episode of the podcast. So what I want you guys to do with your phone, since you're watching this on your PC, most of you guys said, um, take, a, uh, take a picture of this QR code, and it's going to pull up the podcast on your phone. I don't want you listening to the podcast and being distracted during this. So, so go ahead and push play or press pause or something. Make sure to remember to listen to this after. But if you get inspired by some of these strategies that that Carrie and Javali uh, are going to talk about for listening analyzer and market tracker, I would recommend watching this full episode to get all of them. All right, let's uh, talk about what we did last month on the bigger, better launch before we bring in our co-host here. But uh, just, you know, 60% uh, of you said this is your first one. So you must not have seen last month. So let me just, uh, explain to you what you can, what you can do. If you look at the replay, which is on YouTube, by the way, we, uh, opened up brand analytics conversion share in Cerebro. So what that was for those who didn't, uh, get to tune in is brand analytics. As, as many know, for brand registered sellers is a very powerful tool within Amazon that helps you see who are the top three products that are being clicked. And of those products, 
you know, what kind of share of the sales pie are they occupying? All right. So it's very, very powerful metrics to really understand who are crushing the keywords out there. So we have now imported that for uh, Diamond and Elite members into uh, Cerebro. And before we had the click share for a couple months ago, but last month we added the conversion share. And the, and the reason why this is beneficial is because like, for example, that collagen powder, you see how there's a difference in the click share and conversion share. You would think that the if, the, if three products are getting 50% of the clicks, that those three products would have 50% of the sales. Just makes sense, right? But look at that. On this number, they only get 25% of the sales. So that means that there's something about those top three products that maybe people are not really digging and they're buying other products. Amazon never before launched the, these kinds of, of metrics before, but it's very insightful to see. How many of you guys, go ahead and throw it in the chat. How many of you Diamond Elite members are using that or started to look into that? Uh, Luke says, I'm a diamond member. These options are grayed out for me. It shouldn't be. So if, if and there's any other diamond members like Luke out there where it's grayed out, um, you know, it could be an Amazon issue where they're blocking your brand analytics for some reason, because we only show this to people who have brand analytics. So, so Luke, make sure you've got brand registry first, but if you have brand registry from Amazon and you're a diamond member, you should have access to this. The reason why we gray it out for people who don't have brand registry is you know, by Amazon terms of service, we can't show you something that you don't have access to in your own seller central. Um, somebody says, uh, Carl says, I'm an elite user. I use it daily. I love that. That is awesome. And Ryan is using it too. All right, guys, if you're not using it yet, make sure to get into that. Uh, we, we launched something where you could now send a keywords from magnet right into keyword tracker. Uh, we have a, a new cool onboarding process we went over. And then for those of you who maybe English is not your first language, we launched some different ways that you can easily toggle off into Chinese and German and Spanish, where you could actually see the whole Helium 10 interface in one of these other languages at the top. So that was another thing we launched. We also launched a, a new feature in the sales heat map. And it's kind of cool. You know, our, our buddy Sharon out there, he posted, a, maybe you guys saw this in the uh, Facebook group a couple of days ago where, where he's like, hey, show your Helium 10 profit tool sales distribution map. So that's one of the things that we launched last month. So guys, find find that thread there in our Helium 10 members Facebook group and, and throw yours in there. You know, there's no private information that comes out. You know, we're not going to see what you sell or anything, but it's just kind of a fun little thing to see where your sales are for the year. You know, like I, I was making fun of Sharon because he doesn't seem to be doing very good in South Dakota. He needs to step up his game in South Dakota. But look at that. And Florida, he, he's uh, he's selling uh, products in every single county, it seems, there in Florida. But um, South Dakota, he needs to maybe run some Google ads or something. Uh, the other thing that we uh, launched last month was alerts, uh, filters, and bulk enhancement. That was something that Helium 10 users were asking for a lot. It's like, hey, I don't want to activate, I don't want to have to activate my alerts tool by tool or uh, skew by skew. I would just love to be able to click all of them and activate them all. So have you guys done that? Let me, let me know in the comments. How many people have activated alerts for your products? This is something that regardless of the plan that you have in Helium 10, you should be taking advantage of. I'm going to call you guys out. Rod has, Cynthia, Ibrahim, Silas has not. All right, Silas, come on. You got to do that right after this, all right? Elena has, Ahmed. Let me know also in the comments, what are what is something that you have seen in alerts that has actually prompted you to take action or you didn't even know that this happened, like a listing being suppressed or a hijacker jumping on your listing or maybe Amazon changing your dimensions or maybe Amazon changing one of your images. What kind of things have you been uh, noticing in there? Mayumi says hijackers. Uh-oh. Uh, Stephanie lost her buy box. Um, Leanne says all of the above. Uh, Carl got one of his listings suppressed and he got alerted with it. Interesting. Uh, Kevin says the dimensions change twice. Now, Kevin, a question for you. When Amazon changed your dimensions, did your fees go up or was it still in the same price? Because that's why it, that one is actually my most important one. Um, like when Amazon changes your dimensions, uh, you could actually be paying more for shipping and handling every single uh, order. Kevin says it went up. Yeah, you see, this is why, guys, L look at all these things that everybody's posting in the in the chat right here. These are all things that could potentially be affecting your sales, which is why it's important to have alerts activated. So uh, alerts has been around for a while. We didn't launch that in the last video. What we did was allowed you to 
like mass add your your SKUs to it. All right. So guys, take advantage of that right after this call. Add alerts if you do not have it uh, active yet. Uh, the other things we added was you can now transfer your your products from keyword tracker to listing analyzer to do a quick search on there. We're going to talk more about listing analyzer later. Uh, for those wholesale and arbitrage sellers, we increased the search results on black box for diamond and above from 200 to 500. So that was something that a lot of people were asking for. Uh, we added a new Chrome extension widget, and then we also added the brand analytics to magnet. Like I said, I showed you guys earlier brand analytics in Cerebro. But what happened was you couldn't really go directly to a keyword to find out what the brand analytics data was because you have, you know, Cerebro is an ASIN based tool, right? So now you can go and put a keyword or keywords into brand or into a magnet, and then you'll get the brand analytics there. So that was actually one of the favorite updates from everybody. But now what do we have cooking for the month of November? All right. How are we getting bigger? How are we getting better? What are we launching that can help you? All right. So I got an exciting one right off the bat. All right. So question for you, how many of you use PPC with your private label brands? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if you're doing private label, 95% of you guys are using PPC, right? Uh, Amazon PPC. I mean, there are, I, it's not a hundred percent because, you know, there's some uh, categories that you're actually not allowed to do PPC on, but I see a lot of yeses, Mayumi, Ibrahim, Soren. Taryn says PPC is life. Yes, indeed. All right. Now, of those of you who said yes, which is most of you, how many are sometimes shocked with how much uh, your cost per click is on your main keywords? Like you start selling a product and you're like, man, I, I, I got to keep raising my bid. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm paying $4 or I'm paying $5. And it says it's insane. Gail says me. All right. So one thing is that people are like, wonder like, how do I know how much my PPC, you know, might be uh, or my cost per click, I should say. And, and now how many of you are frustrated with how different the Amazon recommended bids are compared to what you end up paying? And when I say Amazon recommended bid, you know, when you go in and create your campaign and you put in your keywords and then it'll say, all right, yeah, you know, you should, you should go ahead and bid $2 or you should bid 50 cents, et cetera. Uh, right. Uh, Alexander says Amazon <laughs> recommended bids are outrageous. Uh, Mayumi says it seems irrelevant. Gail says, uh, Gail also says it's outrageous. All right. So yes, you know, for some, whatever reason, like the, the bid suggestions, you know, like on the coffin shelf before it was telling me I needed to do 75 cents and my cost per click to get to page one position one and sponsor has actually 18 cents. Like it was off by 400%. It's crazy. Right. So now I'd like to, you know, uh, introduce now helium 10 PPC bid estimates and suggestions, right? Uh, this is just a, a, a mock of what it's going to be, but this is very exciting guys, all right? You are now going to start seeing in different Helium 10 tools by the end of this month, uh, this is not available yet, but it's coming, suggested PPC bids, and you're gonna get an exact suggestion, as you see right here, I don't know if you guys can see where my mouse is click pointing, but like, for example, I'll say $1.47, and then the range, a uh, dollar, one to two dollars and one cents. All right. So um, this is something that is going to uh, help you kind of fine tune it. You know, as we know, bids are all over the place on Amazon. You know, th there is no one universal truth. Right. Because like, for example, uh, let's say that you have a coffin shelf or, or here's a perfect example, guys. I sell the coffin egg tray on Project X. You guys seen that coffin shaped egg tray? How many people have seen our coffin sh shaped egg tray? We we did that almost as a joke kind of product because we were doing coffin shelves in one brand and egg trays in the other. So we made a coffin egg tray. It's like the, the ugly step uh, child of, of, of these two brands, right? Now we also sell egg trays. So theoretically speaking, I can be bidding on the keyword egg tray for both of these products, but the bid of what's going to get me to the top of the page is going to be different uh, sometimes because of how much, how relevant Amazon thinks. So again, there, there's no like one magic number for every single keyword, regardless of what product is, right? But that being said, we have so much data at Helium 10 that we were able to develop an algorithm that is more accurate to estimate your bid than the Amazon recommended bid. Um, There's a whole bunch of math my my team gave to me, and I don't understand all these terms. But at the bottom, I was like, bottom line it for me, guys. How how more how much more accurate are we? And it's actually thirty percent on average more accurate than the Amazon recommended bid. So this is something you guys have been asking for uh, so many so many years actually. 
And, and until now, we're like, no, nah, we're not gonna just going to throw you the Amazon recommended bid. I mean, you could see that yourself already. And as we know, a lot of it is outrageous, as some of you, uh, you know, described it earlier right now. So we were able to develop something that is going to be more accurate and give you a better idea. And guess what, guys? This is not something that is going to be gated to just elite. It's not going to be gated to just diamond. Platinum, diamond, and elite, all of you guys are going to have full access to see this suggested bid. But it doesn't stop there. There's one extra thing that for elite, or first of all, Andrea says, why are you more accurate? We're more accurate because at Helium 10, accuracy and data is what we obsess over, all right? We don't release something where we're not feeling confident about it. If we, I mean, there was literally no reason to release something like this if it was just going to be as inaccurate as what you see in, in, in Amazon. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to improve on that with our data scientists that we have, and we were able to. Uh, something that is coming that also at the end of the month, and this one is only for Diamond and Elite, but you're actually going to be able to click let me go back here. You see how there's a graph right here at the end of this uh, suggested bid? Well, Diamond Elite members will be able to click on that, and you're going to see the history of how it has changed. Now, this is what I'm actually super excited about because this is unavailable in Seller Central, as far as I know. You know, Correct me if I'm wrong, but you, there's nowhere where you can go into Seller Central and see how this um, estimated bid that Amazon is giving on theirs how it's changed over time. You know, are there peaks? Are there valleys? You know, what happens during the months where there's Black Friday or you know, Black Friday and Cyber Monday? What happens during Q4? Uh, what happens in the slow months if it's a seasonal product? Do suggested bids go down? So this, I, I haven't even uh, uh, dove into this yet, but as soon as this is available, I'm really gonna look, look at this one because I'm gonna get some insights that nobody has ever seen before, unless you're just like somehow marking down your, you know, the estimated bid. So, you know, if you're already selling on Amazon, you know what your bid history is, but this is going to be helpful for when you're doing product research and looking into potential categories where the bid right now might be $3, but what if in January the bid is only 50 cents? Well, you could literally be, be changing what decision you're going to make as far as getting into a product based on this information. So really, really exciting stuff uh, going to be available by the end of this month. All right. Uh, I hope my co-hosts have joined. Who's next? Uh, Shiv, is that you? Yes, it's Diwali me. is joining us next, and she's going to give us some uh, market tracker strategies. Yes, of course. We're not all just upgrading the tools. We're also talking strategy because that's important. I did want to mention, I absolutely love the comment that Vince threw in there. Bradley works like the Japanese, efficient. Don't know if you saw that, but love so it. Arigatou gozaimasu, vince <laughs> Okay, so let's talk market tracker strategy. This is about the regular market tracker. It's not the market tracker 360, which I'll cover a little bit later on in this webinar for the those seven, eight, nine super high sellers, the seven, eight, nine figure sellers. And market tracker can do a variety of things. All right. There's a bunch of key functions. It can show you the history of your market volume. It can show you your market share, the history of your market share, if it's going up or down, if there's new competitors. Now, typically, if you don't have a tool like this, then you would be doing all of that manually. So that means you personally or maybe your VA or an employee would be going through and checking out those main keywords, trying to figure out where you're ranking page by page or if there's new competitors on the market. Now, with one product, maybe you can do that, but even then it's quite tedious. And then that obviously changes when you have multiple products or multiple brands going on. So that's where Market Tracker can come in. And as opposed to doing all of that manually, now, as long as you input the right keywords, you can track or ignore it automatically inside of the tool. So currently we're taking a look at the coffin shelf market. We have about three keywords that we put in. We can do up to five and then your ASIN, of course. And as long as you've inputted the relevant information, you immediately access things like review count, ratings, price point, sales, your estimated sales, estimated revenue for those competitors as well, as long as you click track. So in the bottom right-hand corner, that little square icon that you're seeing, hopefully you can see it, it just says track or ignore. And that means every time that we find a new competitor that's relevant to your niche, you can click track or ignore. And here, the one that's currently highlighted is the collective home coffin shelf. And if you were to open that up, you would see that it's brand new with zero reviews. 
And unless you were really going through and doing that manual work, maybe you wouldn't have found it. But with Helium 10's algorithm, you were able to check that out without having to really lift a finger or just lift one finger by clicking track. Anyways, this is an amazing way just to analyze all your keywords and find those new competitors to stay ahead and dominate your niche. Now, let's take a look at the next slide, which is still talking market tracker strategy. And I told you some of those main functions of market tracker, but there are some really cool ones. Like, for example, discovering ideas for product targeting, for your PPC campaigns, or even your product line extensions. So some of these suggestions obviously may not be entirely relevant. And of course, relevant is super important, right? These right now that we're looking at, say, jewelry holder, we have cabinet knobs. But for those of you watching, if you know about Project X, which let me hear some noise in the chat. Do you have you guys watched Project X? I hope you have. Yes, I see Cynthia says yes. So you know that we have the coffin shelf, the jewelry holder and the cabinet knobs are not entirely relevant in terms of maybe tracking for competition. However, these are still really cool ideas for if I want to extend my line, or maybe I just want to run some product targeting uh, ads, right? Sometimes you'll find that Amazon's algorithm will show your product listing for a product like this. For example, take the coffin shelf and it'll show up for a product listing like this, and it'll actually convert because Odds are, if you like something like the coffin shelf you're using it year round, you'll probably like it to organize some of your other things too. For example, jewelry, right? Or even just your drawers. That being said, throw these products that you see here uh, into your ad campaigns and check them out just to test them. And of course, you wouldn't know this unless you are looking out for it. So be sure that you're taking a look at your market tracker, your suggestions, and you're tracking them if it's competition. But of course, if it's not entirely relevant, maybe you can click ignore, but then also write it down because you could use that in the future. Going on to the next slide, we are taking a look at x-ray thumbnail downloads. Now, you asked for this. We had quite a few people ask for this. The Excel imports typically provide product details. So that includes your ASIN, your image URL, uh, maybe the, the, not maybe, definitively, the price, the sales, revenue, BSR, the seller country, amongst a handful of other things that you find in x-ray that really gives you that 10,000 foot overview in your niche. But now there's also the inclusion of main images on your x-ray Excel exports. So now you can take a look at all those main images side by side. If you want to print it out, you want to store it for later, you want to give it to maybe a graphic designer. I mean, you name it, you can, you now have it. All right. We do have some additional upgrades to X-Ray. So another thing that we have is the ASIN level graphs now have toggles. So you can switch between the BSR, the sales and reviews inside of X-Ray. Before it was just sales, you could see the 30 days, 60 days, 90 days and all time data. You can do that with BSR and review count as well to make and have your own conclusions with that information. The last thing I will mention about X-Ray is the upgrades to the title keyword table filter. Now, you can include multiple keywords inside of the title keyword uh, filter on X-Ray separated by commas. This is really cool because, as I said before, relevancy is important. And maybe you're looking for something that's holiday specific or it's a very hyper niche focused idea. So that means that let's say you have a steel four piece Ziploc bag organizer or that is going to have a really different market and audience than something that's like a bamboo three-piece Ziploc bag organizer. So now you can include different phrases that contain multiple entries separated by commas, and you can you know, have something that's very specific in your results section for x-ray when you're taking a look at all those products that show up. All right, who am I passing right. the baton forward yeah. to? Carrie. I'll be taking over now. So um, today I'm talking about a listing analyzer. And I don't know if any of you guys have been using it, but I'd love to see in the chat if anyone is using listing analyzer. It's actually one of my favorite products because I used to kind of think, oh, you know, my sales are down. I don't know why. Maybe it's the weather. And I would just kind of guess as to why sales went up, up or down. But with Listing Analyzer, you can actually see a lot of really great information that's going to um, give you some information about what's going on with your listing or in your sales. So first of all, Listing Analyzer is going to give you some top level information. So as you can see here, this is when you when you uh, 
upload your ASINs into Listing Analyzer, you're going to see a listing quality score. You'll see a price. You'll see review count, um, the age of the listing in months. But also right down below that is kind of a sales overview graph. And I'm glad that Bradley mentioned earlier about alerts because uh, if you see those little dots on the screen, you actually those are actually alerts that you set up. So on the sales graph, uh, it could potentially be maybe your review uh, change it. You're, you had some changes to your reviews overall rating. So maybe you went from a 4.7 to a 4.5 and maybe you saw a decrease in sales or maybe, um, you know, there were some other kind of things that happened that maybe are affecting your profitability, like, you know, uh, your, your dimensions, like he was talking about, but all those things are going to be pinpointed on this graph. So it's really kind of a really good indication if you see that graph going up or down when you do have alerts. So um, if you go to the next screen, Right here on this on the sales graph, this is actually just a little bit lower than what I just showed you before. Um, we pinpointed the alerts on you know on September I think it was 28th. We saw um, that there was alert that there was a new subcategory that was added, and as you can see on the uh, graph below that, that is a new subcategory that was added in there. And um, and the reason why that was important is a lot of people who had this happen started getting de-indexed and it doesn't look like it really affected our sales, but it's really important to understand what's going on overall um, with, with your product um, just on a daily basis so that you can prevent anything from happening in the future. Um, and if you are de-indexed, you can you know get your products re-indexed for all the keywords that are important to you. So uh, that's the first strategy there. Um, the second one is you can actually see, like you saw in the last graph, you can actually see the BSR history. So um, this is, you know, again, you can see if another subcategory has been added into uh, onto your listing. But overall, you know, it's really kind of a good thing to just keep track of, although you don't need to really live and die by BSR. You know, some people are like, oh, I got to get my BSR down this or that way. But really, you know, when you you check your your BSR, it's not going to necessarily um, if you know, it goes up or down. If you're kind of in the same area as your competitors, you're not going to see, you know, huge changes in your sales. Maybe you're growing, uh, you know, faster or slower than your competitors. But BSR, you know, is important to you know take a look at, but not something to live and die by. Um, but you can track that in Listing Analyzer, which is really helpful. So those are my two Listing Analyzer strategies for you today. Awesome. Vince, you're up next, I believe. I am. Thank you guys for um, all this great information. I'm really super excited for some of the features we've talked about so far, including the, B the PPC bid estimates. Um, this will definitely come in handy during busy periods like uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday coming up. So before I go into some of the atomic uh, feature updates, I just wanted to share some last minute tips. These are things that I talked about during my Amazon advertising webinar um, beginning of last week. And so these are some things that I picked out for you guys that you can implement. Most of you, hopefully some of you have already doing these things. If you're not, I wanted to make sure that I call this to your attention because uh, these things really can help drive sales over uh, the holiday weekend. Um, number one is just launching coupons. I like to note this because some sellers don't know that um, you have access to this. Uh, everyone has access to coupons. Um, so make sure that you're leveraging this. Uh, put a little budget aside because you do have to pay for these, but you know, when you guys are shopping on Amazon, you definitely notice when there's a coupon badge, when you're looking for something. So if it draws your attention, it's going to draw other shoppers attention. So that's the whole point, especially during this busy holiday season, you want to just drive more traffic to your listings uh, again, by drawing the shoppers attention to your product. Um, last year, um, I got a, a stat from Amazon that said that, you know, last Christmas, they saw a 40% uh, increase in CTR just from shoppers that had uh, coupons on their ads. So definitely consider doing this. And these can go on your sponsored product campaigns, but also across different campaign types like sponsored display if you're brand registered. Um, the other thing that I also want to mention is just dynamic bids in general. This is a setting actually within the campaigns um, that you have to go and look under the, the campaign set, uh, setting section when you're in Seller Central. Some people don't know this is here or it exists. And then most of the best practices that we teach for this is uh, bid down only, which means that you're never really paying your uh, your bid or over your bid. You're always paying a little bit below your bid. Um, but if you've got some established campaigns, campaigns you've been running for a while that maybe have 50 sales or more per week and are had a, a decent day cost or below your target A cost. You might want to test dynamic up and down during this period um, because there's going to be a lot of changes in bid pricing, um, a lot of competitiveness during this period. So bid changes are going to be going up and down quite a bit. 
Um, and so this will help account for that. Now, I don't suggest this across all your campaigns, but again, for your campaigns that are already performing well, you want to make sure that they stay performing well during that, that five-day period, four-day period, and dynamic bids up and down setting is one way that you can do that. Now, the video ads is something that you can only do if you are brand registered, but I did want to make a note on this, especially because um, at Unboxed, which is Amazon Advertising's uh, annual conference they did at the end of last month, they did announce some big changes with a sponsor brand, um, including sponsor display. So video in general, if you guys are running it, if you've tested it before, typically are the highest converting type of campaign. Now, um, that's going to be super important during the holidays, obviously, to tell your brand story um, or, you know, maybe tell them how to use your product, maybe kind of a how to. That kind of uh, visibility and, and storytelling is really good for awareness during the holiday season and can help increase your sales. Now, most of the sponsor brand videos are just in the first search result page. When you do a search, you see the video ad and like maybe in the middle of the page. That's where most people are used to seeing them. Sponsored display is also going to have them um, highlighted uh, beneath the buy box um, and also the uh, product bullets on a detail page. So these are very prime locations. Um, so if you guys are running sponsored branded videos right now, pop over to your sponsored display, like go to create a campaign, pop over to sponsored display. Again, you can only get this if you are brand registered, but you might see a video there as well. I believe they rolled it out to all of North America. If you're in different parts of the country, you might not, or, or parts of the world, you might not see that yet, but just def check it because they're always rolling things out. Um, and I do know that they're going to be adding contextual targeting, um, which is the ability to target specific detail pages right before Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, last but not least, just important to mention, and just making sure your budgets are in line. You know, you want to make sure that you're reviewing your budgets um, that are, you know, uh, for the past couple of weeks or month, um, especially your performing campaigns. Again, and expect double that amount of traffic. So if you're looking at your campaign uh, campaigns budgets, you can you see maybe you might need to double your budget or triple your budget. So maintaining those budgets during the campaigns super important during uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and you know through to Christmas, um, because if your campaigns go off that means your competitors are going to be uh, taking your position and you don't want that. You want that visibility, again, especially for those high performing campaigns. Now, on to Atomic, we do actually kind of make these adjustments a bit easier for you. We, we announced a couple months ago in the BBL um, some new bulk features that you can uh, make, make these changes. So our analytics section in Atomic is really just a high level account overview of everything. You can see all your, your account, your campaigns from a portfolio campaign, ad group level, drill down into search terms and targets and things. But we're rolling out bulk features that you can also then make edits directly from that page instead of having to drill down at the campaign level um, in the ad manager. So a couple of things that you can do, campaign status, turning things off and on. Again, the campaign budgets, like I just mentioned, you can use this to really easily right before the week of um, or maybe the Wednesday uh, before Thanksgiving, increase your budgets by a certain percentage. You can also uh, change it to, you know, you can do dollar amounts, but I always suggest increasing it by percentages. And then just remember to maybe to turn those off afterwards. So you can really do that easily here um, using our analytics uh, bulk features. But we all, we, you know, we've been listening to you guys and those of you who are using Atomic. Um, we've got special features within there uh, that are, are uh, included in our rules and suggestions. You have bid automation capabilities. You have target A cost capabilities. So now you can actually update your turn on and off your bid automation in mass, in bulk, as well as set your target A costs in bulk instead of doing them one by one like you previously had to do. So this is something that a lot of people have been asking for, and we've re we're releasing it for you guys right before this a big holiday rush so you can optimize your account uh, beforehand. Um, the next big announcement that I wanted to make is hourly analytics for our Diamond users. Now, this is only for Diamond users that are spending 20K and above. We're rolling this out in stages. This is something that was available to our elite users, and we announced this at Sale and Scale. Um, and this is our basically our new partnership with Amazon, taking advantage of hourly data. So typically, uh, before this, it was 24-hour buckets that we were receiving data. When you're looking in Seller Central, in the Amazon Ads Console, Typically, you're looking at just 24 hour buckets of time. We are now getting this data at an hourly basis and an hourly level for all of our elite members and now all of our Diamond members that are spending 20K and above. So what that means is that if you log into your dashboard, you now see this new section 
called campaign performance. And this is a really cool way for you to just at, at an account level, uh, dashboard level view of how your campaigns are doing um, over a certain period. Now we suggest the past 60 days worth of data. If you guys are brand new to this tool, you're not gonna see 60 days of data right away. Um, but those of you that are elite and have uh, access to this for a little while, you'll see longer data sets. And the point of doing that is to look at trends. You know, what is, how is my campaign performing at certain times of the day during, at certain days of the week? There's lots of different ways that you can look at this data, uh, but I do wanna stress that you're looking for trends. So looking at a smaller window is not gonna be as beneficial as looking at a longer window of data. So on our dashboard, you can look at this account level, but you can also drill down into specific campaigns. If you know some problem campaigns, also on the dashboard are highlighted, maybe your highest ACoS campaigns, they're also there. So you might wanna look at the, you know, pick those campaigns, select that campaign and just choose, you know, the time period you wanna look at and see how it's performing over time. So not only do you have this, you know, kind of read, uh, you know, only view of this, but we also launched a new area of Atomic and that is called schedules. So this is a brand new menu item. So those of you, again, that have access to this, you'll see in the left-hand side menu of Atomic, uh, a new menu option called schedules. Um, and this is where you can actually do something with the data. Uh, it, you can look and do a similar search as you can on the dashboard here, but this is really where you can drill down at a campaign level and say, you know, I see that this campaign in this screenshot, for example, I can see that this has a really high ACoS during the periods of 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and I wanna make sure that I'm not running this campaign during that period. And again, this is just one campaign. I don't suggest doing this for all of your campaigns and across the entire account, but this is really a, a way to drill down um, and make sure that you're optimizing your campaigns really on that hourly basis. Um, and really excited to hear from you guys that are actually using this, uh, looking to do some case studies with some of you on this to see how the performance is going. Um, but that is it for Atomic. All right, so I'm back with another listing analyzer strategy. And I actually, it's really funny. I was talking to a group of people about how they purchase on Amazon yesterday when we were at our elite workshop. And everyone really agreed that if it's kind of a, you know, $30 product, you're not really as an expensive product, that we're just looking at the images before we purchase and maybe one or two reviews. So images are extremely important. And I would say one of the things that you should focus on, a, you know, quite a bit. Um, and so on listing analyzer, we have this really cool feature called media comparison. And what it does is you you can actually put your competitors into Listing Analyzer and you can compare the images that they have. So you can see kind of trends. You can see, okay, they're using, you know, a certain type of photo that I should make sure that I have in mind. They have infographics or maybe they're, they're, you don't even have infographics. Maybe you can add that and beat them out. So, you know, you can take a look at the overall picture of what your competitors are doing, make sure you're doing at least that and then add, add on some more so that you can convert uh, your customers. So definitely a really cool thing that you can use to see all those pictures just in one place instead of having to clip back and forth on the on the listings. The next thing is the listing analyzer strategy for page views and sessions. So page views and sessions are something that's really, really helpful just to see, you know, maybe why your sales could be going up or down. So, um, you know, again, like I said, I used to be kind of like, oh, I don't know why my sales are up or down, but here you can take a look at, you say, maybe you have an influencer that you have had run a campaign. You can see if, you know, they've increased your, your sessions and page views and your sales. So you can actually track all of that stuff right here. Maybe there's some sort of, you know, Google ads, something like that you're doing to send outside traffic, or maybe you've increased your PPC you can take a look at how that's actually affecting your actual listing. So we have all that one place so you can compare and see how it's affecting your sales on a daily basis. All right. So next, I actually have something really exciting to announce tonight. I think some of you have already even signed up for this. We are uh, launching Exit Ticket today, and we've, we've been working really, really hard on this for months. And I, I just can't wait uh, to get to more details about it. But what we did was we uh, worked with Northbound Group and put together an incredible course about, you know, all the ins and outs of, you know, basically preparing your business for sale. And this doesn't necessarily mean, you know, like you're going to sell tomorrow, but I would say it's kind of like a mini MBA course, to be honest, because I learned so much about business going through it. And it is just an excellent, um, excellent course overall. And so I want to welcome Scott Dietz uh, from Northbound Group. Thanks so much for coming. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. <laughs> All right. So I have a few questions for you. I wanted to 
just ask you so that we can give the audience a really good picture of you know what exit ticket is. So the first question is like, who do you think that exit ticket is for? Like, who should take this course? Yes. Yeah, so um, I think there's two answers to that. Um, I go back to what my mentor always said to me, the time to figure out how you're going to get out of a business is before you got into it. <laughs> so uh, for some people, uh, he would always say to me, you're too late. Um, uh, uh, but really what this program is designed for is to help people that are thinking about exiting in the next year or two. Um, you've reached a certain level of scale in your business that you know that you're committed to it. Uh, and now you want to uh, learn how to uh, transition from building an asset to selling an asset, which leads to the, the one point I always make whenever I speak to e-commerce businesses specifically, is that more than half the money you ever take uh, uh, out of your business will come when you sell the company, not the entire lifetime that you're running it because you're always buying more inventory, you're growing the company. So if you're, this is really geared for those people that might not be ready to exit now, but would like to exit within uh, the next uh, three months to tw uh, 24 months, and you wanna focus on what do I need to do to prepare to be the most valuable and give myself the best chance of exiting my business. Yeah. Well, something I also thought, even if you're not preparing to exit, is that it gives you such a good foundation for building your books and, you know, just understanding accounting, all of that great stuff. So even if somebody is not exiting, there's so much great info that you guys put in there. But yeah, for sure, those those people who are going to exit. Um, uh, so, you know, a lot of people come up and ask you, you know, like, what what is my business worth or you know you know are people still even buying businesses can you kind of speak to that does this course really talk about those kinds of things yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that you know, there's been a lot of news. I'll call it recently about you know certain aggregators that have been struggling. Uh, you know, market conditions with interest rates rising, the economy, those types of things. So the first question I always get asked is, yeah, are people still able to sell their Amazon businesses? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Uh, in fact, if you have a good business, um, uh, it's almost. Uh, uh, more uh, unique today because uh, some of the other people are out there struggling. So I think one of the things to focus on is that there are certain buyers that have pulled back from the market, but I'm still getting contacted at Northbound Group literally every other, uh, you know, every week with buyers looking for great businesses to buy. Uh, and also it's a, a, a very important thing to recognize is that in any market, the uh, if you have a premium company and you have something valuable, uh, there is a buyer for that particular business. Now, multiples may go up and down over time, uh, but the one thing that I always like to explain to people is that buyer sophistication is only going in one direction, which is that buyers are getting more sophisticated. And that's the reason why we put, one of the reasons we put Exit Ticket together is that if they're getting more sophisticated, we wanna give you the knowledge so that you're more sophisticated and frankly can negotiate a better deal uh, uh, for yourself when it comes time to exit the business. Awesome. And I want to also, you know, introduce the people that are going to doing this with you. We've got uh, Danielle Nash and Jamie Davidson, who are also on your team that will be in the um, the actual course itself. But um, yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. this is going to be a, an excellent course. I've gone through it. Um, and it is very, very helpful, very educational. They, they provided so much value um, that they could really charge thousands and thousands of dollars. But if you're a diamond level or above, you actually get access to this course. So for free, so you don't have to pay anything additional if you're a diamond or elite member. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. And you can actually go ahead and, um, you know, scan this QR code, or if you want to go in your dashboard, if you're an elite or diamond member, you can go to tools and then scroll down to exit ticket. That's probably the best way um, to go ahead and access that because you'll probably already be logged into your Helium 10 account. So um, yeah, so go ahead and do it that way. And thank you so much for joining Scott. I think I'm so excited to you know, for everyone to see this course. You did an amazing job walking step-by-step step some complicated things and making them very um, easy to understand. So thank you for all your hard work on that. Yeah, absolutely. And and I guess the last thing I'd like to say is I really always like to reward people that uh, that take action on things. So um, I, I I won't be able to be on for the end of the session today for the Q&A. Um, but if there um, are people out there that are looking to exit in the next two years, and uh, I, I got my start in this exiting my first business about 20 years ago, 
Uh, so I'm going to post my name, my first name, Scott, at northboundgroup.com in the chat here. And for the first five people that would like somebody that's seen hundreds of millions of dollars uh, of exits and assessment of your business, um, I'll hop on personally and uh, spend 30 minutes with you to tell you what I see and more importantly, what buyers see in your business. So uh, um, I, I'm, I'm thankful to Manny and Gee and everybody at Helium 10. Uh, I've got a long relationship with them. And uh, so if you're looking to exit in the next two years and you'd like to just have an independent look um, uh, about what a buyer is going to see in your valuable uh, in your business that might be valuable or not so that you can start planning for it, uh, just email that Scott at Northbound Group and I'll get it set up with you uh, as a way to give some uh, uh, free value for people that are willing to take action. That's amazing. That's that's yeah, definitely jump on that if you're going to exit soon. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Scott. I appreciate all of your, your help with this and uh, look forward to hearing how everyone likes the course. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. What an awesome, generous offer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to go into a live demo. And this is going to be for Market Tracker 360. So earlier, we talked a little bit about Market Tracker. And that, you know, you can use to track your products and see your the history of your market volume and your market share. How is Market Tracker 360 different? Well, this is for our seven, eight, nine figure sellers. This specifically can also show you dynamic tracking, which I'll cover, but this live demo is not just a simple live demo. We're actually going to be incorporating this into all of our future Bigger Better launches. So what this specifically, the segment is going to be is we're going to pick a market and Christmas is around the corner. So I thought it would be fun to do sort of a Christmas tree market and then track it over months. So this month we'll get started. We'll create that market and I'll tell you a little bit about what we're taking a look at. And then next month we'll go back into that same market and talk a little bit more about some of the things that we're seeing and how it's changing. Next, next quarter, we will do a different market. So in the chat, let me know, is there a sort of like a market that you want to be seeing in Q1 of next year? I'm going to let you guys fill some things in, throw some ideas into the chat, and I'm going to click Create Market. So this is Market Tracker 360. If I click Create Market, I'm given some options. So here I can enter up to 15 keywords and as many ASINs as I want to define my market. This is different from Market Tracker because that's up to five keywords and then as many ASINs as you want. Here, I'm going to type in Artificial Christmas Tree. If I spell it right, there we go. And then I have artificial Christmas tree lights, tree with lights. I'm still spelling it wrong. There we go. And then let's do Christmas trees. I'm just doing three keywords. However, know that you have the option of doing just keywords keywords and ASINs or only ASINs. What this will let you do is create any sort of market that you want, and then you'll be given a market composition preview on the right-hand side. So here I have up to four categories, over 376 subcategories, up to four brand, over four brands, and then about 912 plus competitor ASINs. If you want, you can click add from your list. If you have a list created inside of your Helium 10 account, you can also select your products if you have them linked. And then underneath, you get some suggestions that are related to the keywords that you typed in. Now, what makes this special is at the bottom, you have auto update markets. So auto update market is what's going to give you access to dynamic tracking. Without having to necessarily go in and click track or ignore, you can now immediately access those relevant products and choose to have them inputted into your market. Creation is really that first step. After that comes curation and then that market view. What I'm going to do is Normally, you would click Create Market, but I actually already have created this market, so we're going to jump right into that artificial Christmas tree market. Here, you will be able to filter by your date range, and whatever filters and then the date that you select is going to apply to all that information that you're seeing. So here you have last six months, last six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. I'm going to keep it at last six months. And what you're seeing up top is the market performance. Now, I don't have a product that's marked as my own. As you saw, I inputted three keywords that were 
relevant to the Christmas tree market. And then I didn't input any ASIN. So that holds true for this market that you are currently looking at. That's why I'm seeing an average. I'm seeing the market share, the market revenue, and the market unit sales on average. This little number that you see for the percentage with that little going down arrow, that is going to show you the per market performance for this six months compared to the last six months. What I love about this is right now we're taking a look at it. It's saying 10% decreasing, but it'll be interesting to see how that changes next month as we are really hitting December in full swing. Underneath that, we have something called an insights board. This insights board will show you those top performing brands, fastest growing brands, top declining brands. And you can also segment them out by products and categories. Right now, as you're taking a look at it, you're seeing that National Tree Company is really on top of the revenue and unit sales for this niche based off the keywords that we input it. But if you take a look, number two for unit sales is Go Plus. This is interesting because for revenue, it's number four even though it's really dominating for sales. So what could that really mean? It means that even though they're selling a lot, maybe their price point is lower. And let's say that the market that I'm really interested in is the mid-range uh, Christmas trees. So what I would do here is to narrow down further on the market I'm looking at. If I go into filter, I can input, let's give it a second here, there we go. So here we have some filters that allow you to get a more in-depth, concise view of that market you're looking at. And you can even save it as a filter preset. Here you have access to the average 30-day revenue, the 30-day unit sales price range. We wanted to look at that mid-market range. So let's type in 50 for a minimum and then a max of 100. And our market that we're currently looking at is actually inclusive of 1P sales. So maybe I only want to take a look at the 3P. I can click apply and it will change all the information I'm seeing to be only based on the filters that I've applied. I saw earlier when I was covering Market Tracker, there was a question for whether you could segment by categories and take a look at brands or products that are specifically for a brand. You would be able to do that with Market Tracker 360 for sure. Here you have the brand and the categories and subcategories options. And if you wanted, you could go through and select those items as you see fit before clicking apply. And that would give you all of that relevant information. Let's go ahead and click apply here. So you see that it says market share is 58.76%. Let's take a look at how that changes. And before we had National Tree Company on top, how does that change when we're taking a look at the mid-market range? And there you have it. You have Go Plus on top now. And as I said before, when you were taking a look at revenue and then the sales, sales, they were pretty high up, but revenue, they were a little bit lower, even though they were still in top five. So this is a cool way to kind of track your movers and shakers. Also just to see where are you really based and hone in on that niche you're really selling in. We went from 58% to 50%. Now this is based off a market that I don't have a product marked as my own. If I were to mark a product, I could go down and so let's say that Go Plus was the brand that I was selling. This is my brand. I would be able to go in and actually select this product as my own. And it would change this information up here to be just my market share compared to the rest of the market that I'm looking at for the filters that I've applied. Here I have the Go Plus products. Now this really is going to get into the overall market and we could even go into the product analysis pages, but I want to save a little bit for something next month so we can track how it's changing as well as get you guys excited about what this tool can really do. If you wanted to go into the product section for the insights board, you could take a look at products as opposed to brands. Right now we're taking a look at the overarching brands market. But if I went into products, I could see which product is really the top performing product for this niche based off the filters we have inputted and the keywords or the hybrid market or the ASINs market, whatever you've really chosen is really dominating. So here you have the Go Plus Christmas tree. It's on top still. You could go into top declining if you wanted to see which competitors you really don't have to worry about as much anymore. And then, of course, you can also take a look at categories. So, I mean, this right here, palm tree top declining palm tree is probably not going to be entirely relevant to the Christmas tree market. You could always go into filters and then take that right out if you wanted. 
So for today, we covered market creation. We talked a little bit about those filtering basics. We're taking a look at the Christmas tree market for this month and next month. We narrowed it in onto the mid-market Christmas tree sales, and we saw how we could see the revenue and the sales, but also break it down further into which brands or products or categories are really doing well or not doing so hot over the, that net growth change. Next month, we'll talk about overall market charts, the product pages, and how you can really get really cool keyword insights by using Market Tracker 360. If you're interested in Market Tracker 360, I'll let the uh, next person sort of take back. There we go. So we have the Market Tracker 360 QR code. You can take a look at this and access the most accurate insights. As you saw, you can get really in depth with what you want to see in terms of niche, in terms of the filtering. If you want to hone in on other competitors' keyword strategies, I'll show you that next month. So be sure to stay tuned. And if you want to know before that, make sure that you check this out and request a demo. All right. Thank you so much, Shivali. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and take over. And so what I'd like to know in the chat is I'm curious to know if any of you all are using influencer marketing and to, you know, for your Amazon product, or maybe even to your Shopify sites. Um, I know that it is something that's a lot of people are, are thinking about, maybe haven't taken action on because PPC costs are going up and it's becoming, becoming more and more expensive to really market your product. Um, so, you know, there's just a lot of just more challenges that we're seeing, not only with, you know, Facebook ads and just in general, just getting eyes on your product. Um, so it looks like some people are saying not yet. And some people are saying, yes. Okay. So um, we have something very exciting, and it is actually with one of our sister companies, Refersion. They are actually uh, connected to Helium 10. So um, Refersion is actually going to give you a free ebook, and you can actually see the QR code right there. And in this uh, in this um, ebook, we're going to talk about you know why affiliate marketing is low risk and high ROI. And I can definitely give you a, an example of this. I actually had somebody review my product without me even asking. And it, this video got over a million views. And you can actually see my sales just skyrocket on that day when that video launched. So I can definitely attest to, you know, the power of influencer marketing, and especially, you know, if you follow somebody online, you know that you usually listen to them about, you know, different product recommendations. So it's very, very powerful if you have the right influencers in your audience. So in this ebook, we'll also talk about the benefits of driving external traffic, um, the key elements to how, having su success. So I think a lot of people want to do this, but how do you do it? And then just, you know, commonly ask questions, um, you know, about affiliate marketing. So if you're trying to figure out, you know, who do I ask? How do I get this done? How do I even get this started? This ebook is for you. And I definitely recommend checking it out and, you know, starting at least small and implementing it. And like I said, on the, on those other listing analyzer pages, you can actually track, you know, your sessions, your page views, you can see your sales, you can see how these on a daily basis, these influencers are actually affecting your Amazon sales. So you can track it in all the Helium 10 tools and you can get all the information and the tools you need through reversion. So definitely check out that ebook and, um, you know, you, there's a QR code there. And then I think there's also in the chat, there's a link to the ebook there. So we would love for you guys to, you know, check that out. Let us know if you have any questions and and um, it's definitely something I highly recommend. I've seen some really powerful results in my own business. All right. So the next thing is that we have something called the Serious Sellers Hub. And if you haven't know, if you don't know what that is, it's where we have a bunch of partners that have partnered with Helium 10 that offer a bunch of different services. And something cool that we have is we have offers now available in that series sellers hub. So for example, they're like, for example, Northbound group, they actually get, have an offer for the elite right now. So if you're an elite member, you can go into the series sellers hub and claim the offer from Northbound group, or you can go to any other, um, any of our, our partners that are offering some different deals and you can claim those. Now it's going to be based on your level. So some are available to platinum, some are available to diamond, some are available to elite. So make sure you keep an eye on the Serious Sellers Hub because we are always trying to put together some really great deals for you with our partners so that you can, you know, run your business and um, and get some great help to boost your sales. So go ahead and take it away, Bradley. All right. Thank you, team. I was able to take a quick nap here uh, in the background while they handled the show. Love it. Thank you guys very much. Let's go back to some of our strategies now. Um, hopefully you guys have seen the, you know, how powerful our market tracker and listing analyzer uh, tools are. Um, 
you know, with what they've been presenting. Remember, the, these are not newly uh, uh, newly released things or, or things that's coming by the end of the month or things like that. These are things that you guys have available right now. Um, so make sure that you are using Market Tracker now. How many? Let me know in the chat really quick. Um, I, I'm going to give you guys another you know quick tip on Market Tracker. But how many people have a market created in their Market Tracker? Let me know in the chat. Let me call you guys out here. Um, how many have been getting insights? Uh, Soren, Stephanie, Gary, Tobias, Rod. All right, so that's great. Andres, Gary, Zachary started using it recently. Deborah is a no for right now. All right, so for all the you like Deborah, who's a no right now, what I want you guys to do as soon as this is over is take the 60 to 120 seconds it takes, two minutes, guys, to set up your market. It might actually take a day to actually process, but to actually do the setup part that you're doing, only takes about 60 seconds where it's going to ask you to enter in your own product and four or five of the main keywords in your niche. And that's all you have to do to get all of this data that Carrie and Shivali have been showing you and that I'm about to show you as well. So Market Tracker, I think, guys, is slept on by too many people. Um, and then, you know, if you're a seven, eight, nine figure seller and you know, you're using Market Tracker and you feel like you need more information, well, that's where Market Tracker 360 comes in. And which is what Shivali was demonstrating. So if you want to take it to that next level, make sure that you, you know, set up Market Tracker 360. But I don't care if you're a brand new seller, you just started selling yesterday, you should have a market set up in your regular market tracker. All right. Now, one of the big advantages of market tracker once you have once you have it set up is understanding your market share. All right. How many times, guys? I saw it yesterday. Do we see in the Helium 10 members Facebook group somebody saying, hey, Anybody sales down this month or man, my sales are down the last couple of days. Anybody else? And, and it drives me crazy when I see those because nobody should be asking that question. Why? Why? You should know if your sales are down and if that's a bad or good thing, because if you are tracking your market and market tracker, you'll be able to see maybe it's all of your competitor sales are down. You know, maybe there's just, you know, the whole coffin shelf market overall, people are not buying uh, as much. Uh, what you really need to be concerned about is if your piece of the pie is down, you know, if the market is staying steady and your sales are going down, that's when you should be worried. If your sales are going down, but the market is going down, well, that doesn't matter because everybody's sales are down, right? So that's par for the course. So that's what Mark, well, that's what you see here in this screen where the market volume for the coffin shelves is $44,000. And you can see it's been pretty steady in September and October. This number here is the important one. My market share, 20%. I have got 20% of all of the market of all the crazy weirdos out there buying coffin shelves for their house, right? I want to keep that 20%. I don't want somebody else taking a bigger piece of the weirdo pie out there. And so that's why I can actually see how my share, my market share has been increasing. That 20% equals about $10,000 a month of coffin shelf sales, all right? Now, when I need to get worried, is if my market share is going down and that percentage is going down because that means that I've got competitors doing better than me, uh, you know, uh, relatively speaking, or that there's new players in the market and they're stealing some of my sales. All right. So guys, you don't have to ask in a Facebook group if this is happening. Nobody's going to be able to tell you, you know, you're not even telling us what your product is that you're selling. Right. So how are you supposed to know if, if you're in trouble or not? But you don't need you don't need to ask. Just go into Market Tracker, guys, and you're going to know this instantly. Uh, one other update we've had in our other tool, Listing Analyzer. This is pretty cool. Uh, since we've been adding so much to Listing Analyzer, we've been seeing way more people using this and using it more often. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I'd like to announce that for Platinum members, we have doubled how many times you can use this in a month. Before, you could only run Listing Analyzer 25 times. Now, all of you Platinum members, you can run it 50 times. For those who are Diamond, you used to be able to run it only 50 times. Now you can use this 150 times per month. And then the other announcement is if you're an elite, before you could use this 125 times a month. Now you could use this up to 300 times a month, 10 times a day. You guys can actually uh, run uh, listing analyzers. So we're trying to make sure that you guys can get the most use out of these tools. Now I got uh, one question for you guys, um, or a couple questions actually. One of them is, have you ever wanted to launch a seasonal product? Let me know, let me know in the chat. You, anybody ever like, ah, oh, man, I want to sell this product, even though I know it's only going to be popular in summer. Or maybe, ah, oh, man, this is a, 
a great Christmas product uh, to sell, or I really want to do this Valentine's Day product. How many people? Tobias, go, go, go ahead and call call out in the chat, guys. Nobody knows who you are. Let us know what kind of seasonal product you guys have uh, been interested in selling before. I'm just curious what ones you have. Oh, look at Soren says, I only have seasonal products. All right. K says he wanted to do beach products before. Lesia says Christmas products. Uh, Tobias says swimwear. All right. Uh, Zach says he just had a successful Halloween products. Yes. You know, there's people out there who try and say, oh, never do seasonal products. I, I don't think that's accurate or that's good advice. You know, nothing wrong with doing seasonal products. How, uh, how about this one? This question, you ever notice that a competitor was crushing it in a certain month? Like maybe you guys were looking at their listing and listing analyzer, um, or maybe you were looking at it just with the, the, the Helium 10 Chrome extension and you clicked on their BSR graph and you're like, holy crap, look at this way back in July. These guys were like top 100 BSR. These guys were crushing it in, in July or something like that. You guys ever, you ever looked at a competitor? And was like, wow, they, they're not doing that great now, but man, were they crushing it in a certain time, all right? If you guys haven't been looking at that, you should be, all right? Um, now, I'm just curious. When you're doing research for a seasonal product, like I'd ask, or maybe you're wondering why a competitor is crushing it in a certain month, how have you done your historical keyword research? You know, like if I launch, if I want to launch a product for Valentine's Day right now. I think Valentine's Day is February, March, February. I don't know. If, if I want to launch a product for Valentine's Day, I know it's not November, right? How would I do my keyword research now? Now, for me, let me answer that question for myself. For myself, if I was ever going to launch a product that was for like a season ahead of times, I would pretty much only be able to look at brand analytics and I would try and find the top seller and then I would change the dates to look in the history in brand analytics. But that's kind of limited, right? Because it's only showing me, um, you know, who is the top three clicked, all right? So the question is, like, how do we get more data with keywords but from a historical viewpoint? And that's why, you know, we talked about this in our elite webinar that a few of you were on. But we're proud to introduce Cerebro historical data, all right? Cerebro, as we know, uh, it's amazing for seeing what is going on right now or in the last 30 days. Like, where is this product showing up for in the organic results? Where is this product showing up for in sponsor results in the last 30 days? Super, super powerful, right? But if you're wanting to launch a product when it's not in season, to be honest, you can't really use Cerebro or until now, you haven't been able to really use Cerebro to get insights. Like right now, I can't put in the top seller's of February 2021 Valentine's Day into Cerebro and get what are all the keywords that they got sales from, right? But guess what? At the end of this month, elite members are now going to be able to do that, all right, with Cerebro historical data. So what you're seeing now is a graph that you're going to be, the elite members are going to be able to click on to see this. Like, for example, I put in some coffin letter boards right here, like four coffin letter board products. And first of all, I can actually see the trend here of overall how many keywords these products were ranking for on average and how many sponsored ads. Now, first of all, this gets me super excited because I can see that these guys are not are barely doing sponsored ads for a lot of keywords. Look at this. I mean, it's dominated by organic. The purple is the organic keywords that they're ranking for. And this gold that you can barely see here at the bottom is the sponsor. So I, I already have insights, you know, looking back, there was even a couple months where nobody was running sponsored ads almost. Right. But now I'm going to be able to see over time, like how has one product been increasing their keyword real estate time over time. Right. Um, take a look at this slide here. If I, if I actually click on one of the products, it's going to show me just that product. So I just clicked on one of these products and I could see that they actually stopped doing sponsored ads in May of 2022. Like, what are they even thinking? They're, they're like, oh, you know what? I, I don't, I don't want to get any PPC sales, so I'm just going to stop doing ads. So, like, I know instantly if I was going to get into this product, I'm going to do pretty well against him if I'm doing sponsored ads and can crush him at this game. He literally stopped in May of 2022. You never have had access to data like this for your competitors. I mean, you don't need this for yourself. You know if you're doing sponsored ads or not. But this is great for analyzing the keyword strategies from competitors, what they're doing month over month. I, I'd be trying to see what in the world happened to them in August. Maybe they were out of stock. They weren't even ranking for any keywords in August, right? 
Um, I would be curious to see what was going on in February. It seems like they had some pretty good reach in February. Uh, here's another screenshot. I, let's just say I'm going to click on one product and I see that there are so many keywords they're ranking for in September. Well, what's going to happen when I click on this date now is I'm going to see cerebral results of what was going on for that product in their peak month of sales, September. And this is so important when there is seasonal uh, seasonality with a keyword. I'm going to be able to take that example I just told you. I'm going to find who is the number one seller of Valentine's Day products in February of 2020 or February of 2021, and then reverse engineer all of those main keywords that they were ranking for. Uh, so I don't have to wait until Valentine's Day is already here to see what the top Valentine's Day keywords products are or to see where I need to get sales from. I could do that in July. I could do that right now in November. Super, super powerful, powerful hashtag game changing insights you guys are going to be able to get uh, with this. Um, here's another example right here where I can just click on one product and then I could see what were they doing for sponsored and organic keywords in a month. So guys, this is, I mean, I know normally I, I'm kind of over the top with my, <laughs> how excited I get over this stuff, but no matter how excited I get or you guys think I am, it's not, I guarantee you, it is not an accurate representation of how internally excited I am about this tool. This is something I've been wishing we could have even for my own accounts, let alone for all Helium 10 members. But I would just love, in, I've always wanted insight like this. You know, for three or four years, I've been asking, begging our team to make this kind of tool because it's so powerful, even if you're not doing a seasonal product. You know, I told you about that one example, like maybe you or your competitor was just crushing it one month. And now it's December and you, you're only noticing this months later. Well, until now, you have never had the ability to really look into a deep dive into what keywords drove their sales. But guess what, guys? It's not just looking at when they were crushing it. Sometimes you can actually get more insights when they're doing terrible. Like they had a month where their sales or your sales were just absolute trash, right? Well, guess what? But with this, you're going to be able to see what keywords did they lose ranking in that caused them to lose all of those sales? And then now you're going to be able to take action and be like, oh man, I can never, ever let my rank go below this because the last time this happened, I lost 20% of my sales just because these three keywords got to the bottom of page one. This is the level of insight and action you guys are going to be able to start taking. So if you're interested in this and you want to be one of the first ones, or actually, I shouldn't say if you want to be one of the first ones to use it. This is not something, guys, that we're planning to roll out to Diamond next month and Platinum the next. This is only for elite members right now. This was specifically designed for them. So if uh, if you're watching the replay, guys, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to join Elite. Like like Elite is closing for the rest of the year um, as of Friday. Wait, today's Thursday, right? Yeah, today's Thursday, uh, Friday at 5 p.m. Oh, yeah, it says it right here. I don't have to guess. Friday at 5 p.m., you're no longer going to be able to. If you go to this link, guys, uh, still do it. Still do it because you'll be able to get on the waiting list, all right? But you'll see a waiting list. But right now, guys, take action so that in December, uh, you are going to be able to get a lot of use out of this tool preparing for your 2023 sales. You're going to be able to go month by month and see what you were doing, what your competitors have been doing. And it's going to be invaluable as you approach your 2023 sales. All right, guys. So get in now. Uh, this is the last chance to get into Elite for the rest of the year. Make sure to join. If you're already on Diamond, guys, it's a no-brainer. Just, just, just upgrade to the Elite for a couple of months to try this out. And I think you're going to be hooked once you start. I'm, I'm hooked and I haven't even used it yet because it's so amazing, you guys. So uh, very happy to announce this feature. Now, where, you know, as I told you guys, I've been telling our, our team to make this for years. Most tool ideas don't come from me here. Uh, it's actually from you guys. And so the way that we hear from you guys on how uh, exactly you want us to update our Helium 10 tools is so many of you are using our request a feature, share your idea option. So, right, it's on everybody's dashboard, regardless of what level Helium 10 you are. Hit that question mark at the very top and then hit share your ideas and make sure to let us know what we can do for you to help you get bigger, help you get better at Amazon. What can we launch to help you do that? 
All right, guys, that's about it. All the time we have for today. Uh, so I uh, actually have on the screen right here. You guys still see my screen share, right? I had some technical difficulties. Okay. Um, there's a QR code right here, and this brings you to our Bigger Better Launch Hub. So you can actually view previous ones. You know, 60% of you guys said this is the first one you've seen. So you 60% out there, I want you going back and you know catching up with some of these. Helium10.com forward slash launches, guys. You Not only can you sign up to the old or view the old ones, the replays, you can actually sign up for our new ones. And uh, do I have another slide here? Do we have another? Oh, wow. We already have a date for the next uh, the next uh, months, and that is December 15th. All right. So on that page later on, you're going to be able to register for next month. So all of you who are brand new, I don't want this to be. I know this is your first, but I don't want this to be the last BBL that you join. Uh, please come back on December 15th, and you'll see what we have cooking in the kitchen. Any last uh, words of wisdom from our team here? Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, have, I have a great everybody... Black Friday, Cyber Monday, everybody. Yes. Good luck to what everyone. That? That's next week, right? Next week. Yeah, next week. Hey, what, what's the new word for that? I've seen a new trend or a new the, trend. The a new, new trend is uh, Cyber Five. Cyber Five. That's it. Yeah. All right. Because truthfully, um, people are shopping on Thanksgiving. So <laughs> if you count Thanksgiving, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Cyber Monday, it's, uh, uh, I just heard it too from Amazon earlier uh, in our co marketing webinar. They just call it Cyber Five. And it's true. Like, I know a bunch of people that are on Thanksgiving are going to go to Best Buy. No way. <laughs> or shop online. On Best <laughs> I'm not Buy. doing anything. It's, it's a shopping day now. So, not Cyber best. Five. It's well, an eating happy day. Happy Cyber Five <laughs> to everybody out there. And we'll see you guys next month. Bye bye now. <laughs> bye. Bye bye.